Uh, this week's movie for my wife's movie club is Roman Holiday. Now, I've seen Roman Holiday probably three, maybe four times, I think, and I like it, uh, but I'm not exactly sure why. So, the story is about Princess Anne, who has been pushed to her limit and needs a break. It starts off with a newsreel, which says, The smiling princess shows no sign of strain of the week's continuous public appearance in her goodwill tour to cement trade relations. She's tired of introductions, the dancing with strangers, her nightgowns, her underwear, her highly scheduled life, and the expectations to improve trade relations, etc. Well, in the bedroom, she's offered a nightly crackers and milk and complains, everything we do is so wholesome. What does she want? She longs for pajamas for local music. Maybe she wants to live a normal life. Fun, maybe? A uh, lack of schedule and some freedom, certainly. Oh, you can't imagine. I'd, I'd like to do just whatever I like the whole day long. Things <laughs> like having your hair cut, eating gelato. Yes, and I'd, I'd like to sit at a sidewalk cafe and look in shop windows, walk in the rain, have fun, and maybe some excitement. This movie is about trade relations, and the first lesson is there is always a cost, or there's always more to the story, or there is always a downside to everything. While it is common to fantasize about being a princess or being rich and famous, her desire is to escape it, and does not want to be a princess. So I know what you're thinking, you know, poor baby, been left in your wallet. But the value of Anne's life is not only a measure of wealth, position, responsibility, or power, but of her happiness and her experience. So, she sneaks out to see Rome, to get her hair cut, to smoke her first cigarette, drive recklessly without a license, destroying several people's property, to get arrested, to shop without money, to fight her country's secret service, and jump in the water to escape her smothering life for a day. She also introduces herself and dances with strangers, but this time it's not out of duty or her position. The next lesson of trade relations is motivations. The whole motivation for Princess Anne's holiday is not altruistic, but selfish. I think uh, self-interested may be the better term here, but it is self-interest for both Anne and then Joe. She leaves the palace on drugs uh, to have some freedom, and when she is about to return, Joe convinces her to have a holiday. Joe, we can't go running around town with a hot princess. You want in on this deal, or don't you? For Joe, she is an opportunity. Money and freedom are a story away. He borrows, makes promises, bets on what he thinks is a sure thing, gets into fights, and punishes his friend for not getting his social cues. He takes a big risk in hopes of a big payoff, which makes it a bit more surprising when he doesn't take advantage of it. The consequences of his later action cost him big time, so why, does he, why doesn't he cash in? Well, first of all, he never did interview her. I'm not sure what his strategy was going to be uh, but to get the story, but uh, whatever it was, he wasn't getting close. Uh, he doesn't ask her any of the scripted questions. He doesn't get any stories or answers for the story. However, I mean, he could have wrote a different type of story, sell the pictures. Uh, they discussed, uh, you know, those gossip-type headlines in the magazines in the bedroom there. Um, however, both the photographer and the newsman, uh, Irving and Joe, both independently decide not to. Why? Because of trade relations. The great Thomas Sowell put it this way. There are no solutions, there are only trade-offs. And you try to get the best trade-off you can get. That's all you can hope for. Sure. Joe was using her for the story, but he finds himself falling in love with Anne. Not, not in a physical way, but like falling in love with Rome. You know, it's that romantic sort of way. And to him, the value of her return friendship, admiration, love, if you want to call it that, her image, her respectability, etc., are worth more than paying his debts, uh, his money, getting the money, uh, and the ability to go back to America. This is a clear example of subjective value. I still think he could have wrote a great story, one of the won the bet, and received uh, the agreed price with his boss, 
maybe I'm idealistic, but when it comes to the truth, and I, I don't understand the media, but not all those pictures would have caused a scandal. I mean, maybe they could have worked something out. I guess the lesson is not all trade decisions are made with the right motivations. The purpose of trade is to get the best outcome for both parties. Sacrifice is good and has its place, but for trade to be beneficial, both parties must be winning. When, For example, when I buy a hamburger, I am saying I value the hamburger with all the motivations of the hamburger that go with it more than the money that it costs. And the business selling me the hamburger is saying I value your money more than the hamburger. See, we both win. This is a good trade. And I guess for me, Joe's decision is strange or weird because it does not feel like a win for either party. They go their separate ways after the, their exchange and uh, most likely never see each other again. And while they treasure it for now, I wonder if you know a scandal of a continuing relationship would have been more beneficial for both of them. I mean, thinking long term is an aspect of trade. You save money instead of buying every little thing you want in hopes for a beneficial future purchase that you know takes more money. Uh, anyway, the point of the film is that it made sense to them. They may not have made the correct decision, but the value of their relationship was of more value than uh, his debt, loneliness, and other consequences that came afterward. So the last lesson uh, from Roman Holiday on trade relations is consequences. If you make bad decisions, you will pay for them. Um, fun is fun, but Anne realizes her holiday has externalities. There is an impact from her actions, and others will be impacted if she completely abandons her post. Her self-interests are important, but her self-interests include a love and a care for her people. Therefore, knowing that her responsibilities are affecting her country, trade relations, etc., she returns to take her position and fulfill her duty. It's probably a good thing that she did not have to see what it was like to live without money for long periods of time, etc., etc., so, in conclusion, Roman Holiday is about trade relations. It is the purpose of her tour and the making of her adventure. I like this movie, not for any of those reasons. I think I like it because it's easy to watch and it's disarming in a lot of ways. Despite any criticisms uh, and of their decisions, their motivations, the uh, actions or the events, I find Joe and Anne delightful. To use the Scottish word, it's a bonny film and share the excitement of the wildest escapade that ever set the eternal city on its ear. <laughs>